है सो ओके हाय हाय सो हाय एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू बी टॉकिंग अबाउट पीसीओएस which is extremely important extremely specific which is why i'm so excited to tell you that we've got on board uh, miss nidhi singh who uh, is the founder of a community called pcos club india and i'm very excited to hear what she has to share with us so i'm going to just quickly add her Hi. 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 How are you doing? Thank you. Uh I'm doing very well. I hope you're well too. Thanks for having me yeah. today. Yeah. No, I'm so excited uh to have you. So I was just saying that we're obviously going to be talking about PCOS today and I I was just introducing and saying that it's an extremely important topic because um it's become so common and also that we wanted somebody who is uh who has really had experience working with people who are managing pcos or you know dealing with pcos on a daily basis and which is why we are so excited to have got you and so we are really excited to have you actually thank um, you so before we start thank you i would like to take this opportunity to congratulate you the kind of community that you've built and the kind of work that you've been doing and uh very very inspiring uh, uh and likewise like i'm excited here To, to be here and talk about um, PCOS and answer all your questions. That's so kind of you. So before we begin, I would actually love for you to introduce yourself briefly to everybody who's uh, you know joined. So yeah. Okay. So uh, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Nidhi Singh and I'm founder of uh, PCOS Club India. I think it was one of the first community pages that we started in India to talk about. uh this almost becoming an epidemic kind of condition affecting more than one in five i think it's one in three women now who are getting these symptoms and suffering in silence because of delayed uh diagnosis or misdiagnosis or not enough care or uh information about how to manage this condition uh the reason why i started this community was because i personally went through pcos and i have pcos myself it is uh, uh not okay to say that pcos can be cured uh, uh and there's no science which confirms that but i can proudly say that i've learned so many ways to manage it naturally uh, i've not been on a pill for many many years i've had a really really bad experience dealing with oral contraceptives running from one practitioner to the other uh so my aim was to educate women that pcos can be managed naturally if you take the right steps uh last year i formally uh, registered this um, community as a company and i myself uh uh i'm studying about nutrition and did a course from manash university as well on pcos so that makes me even more confident when i speak about pcos at least the right diagnosis and the treatment options so that's what i bring as a community trusted health practitioners trusted content uh products that are doing really well and community experience for everybody so that's what we are at this point so that's peace as love india okay thank you so much for that thank you so much for that and yes definitely uh you know one of the reasons we were so excited to have you was because like you said that you have actually uh worked so hard on getting the right information even in terms of training whether it's uh, you know doing something on pcos or even studying nutrition so that really really makes us feel safe even talking to you and i <laughs> i am sure everybody who talks to you feels that way so i'm just going to start off today on a on a on a simpler note because um i do know that we have a lot of people who in our community who are younger menstruators who have either heard about pcos from someone or know somebody who has pcos and are like and like are not very um, sure of what it even really is so i think i would just love for you to start from a place where we can just talk about uh, what pcos even is um and also maybe touch a little bit upon pcos versus pcod because again very very confusing topic a lot of information 
uh, you know, no way to figure out what's correct. So I think that would be a great place to start from. Right. Uh, I think that's a wonderful place to start from. Um, so firstly, there's no difference between now, there is no difference between PCOD and PCOS uh, as per science. Earlier, uh, they, they were considering PCOS as a condition which was affecting all your endocrine system while PCOD was a bit less severe. But at this point in time, it's used interchangeably and there's no distinction as such because uh, it could be because there are a lot of symptoms that uh, in combination of each other are being felt by the uh, women, but there's no distinction as of now. Uh, okay. In PCOS, uh, what women experience and what are the very, very early signs are that you start to experience irregular periods uh, as one of the symptoms. And I'll come in detail what an irregular period could also mean. It could be different for everybody. So uh, irregular periods, uh, the absence of ovulation, uh, headaches, um, painful periods, weight gain or weight loss, uh, bad emotional health, body image concerns, depression, mental well-being is severely affected. Some of the women also see that their sexual health is also affected. It could come from body image and depression issues, hair loss, alopecia, uh, hirsutism like facial hair growth, uh, body hair growth, more than normal than when you start experiencing more than normal body hair growth. Uh, those are the early signs that you start to, uh, that, that could indicate you have PCOS. Now, these are the symptoms. Uh, when we look at a diagnosis, the diagnosis part is very, very important, especially for the young girls. So I will start with what the diagnosis is right now, which is used for, uh, you know, as a global measure to see what could PCOS mean. And then I'll come to what, you know, adolescent versus the adults. So as per the Rotterdam criteria, which is a globally accepted scale, you must have two out of the three conditions. So one condition could be that you have irregular periods or absent periods or delayed periods. Uh, what is the irregular periods? So anything which is less than 21 days or more than 45 days as a cycle, or you have uh, less than eight cycles in a year. Okay, so that could mean a irregular period for you or you've not had enough periods in a year. Uh, second is that you experience high male androgens symptoms like it could be alopecia, scalp-like hair loss. Uh, it could be a lot of hair growth as we uh, spoke about. So it could be on the chin. It could be on your just one side of the face. It could be different yeah. for anybody. It could be you experience like uh, your hair growth has become thicker than earlier. Uh, you could also experience a lot of hair growth on your body. So this is something like a male type hair growth you start experiencing. Then third is that you see a polycystic ovarian morphology on your ov ovaries and that is you discover from the ultrasound. Now, the le recent research in the guidelines, I'm quoting the PCS guidelines 2018 and anybody who's interested to read more, they can Google PCS guidelines 2018 by Naman Ash University. Uh, so what they say is that you have to have, uh, you know, if you're using a, a, a good technology or the latest technology, the intra IVS kind of uh, ultrasound, then you should have more than 20 follicles on your ovaries or greater than 10 ml size of ovaries, either or both. Now, when you're using a, a, a lower technology of ultrasound, then this follicle uh, number changes. And a lot of it depends. In fact, there are people uh, uh, who find it very difficult when the diagnosis has happened, how to count follicles. It also depends on kind of wavelength that they're using in their ultrasound. So counting the follicles becomes very, very difficult. But nonetheless, if the ovaries are bulky and they're more than 10 ml, uh, either or, or both, uh, that is the polycystic ovarian morphology that I'm saying. The number of follicles and the num uh, uh, size of the ovaries both can be used to understand the third criteria. So you, uh, it is just two out of the three conditions, all three conditions that could make you have PCOS. So this means you do not necessarily have to have follicles or cysts to have PCOS. If you have right. irregular periods or absent periods along with high male androgen, hyperandrogenism, 
you could be detected with PCOS. Now, right. when it comes to adolescents, young girls who have just started periods, so there are a lot of women, uh, young girls with their mothers who come to me and say that maybe at 13 years of age, uh, she's detected with PCOS and uh, she just had a period last year. So it is very, very, uh, uh, you know, it's impossible to detect PCOS when you just started your period. Why? Because when a girl starts to menstruate, okay, until three years, okay, so let's say start the one year, uh, she's into pubertal uh, transition. So that right. particular time, there is high chances to have follicles already on our ovaries. Uh, so until eight years of menstrual age, which means when you start your menstruation, until eight years, it is also not advised to use a ultrasound in a girl because of the follicle, follicular presence due to the puberty. Uh, so only two conditions which could be met in her case when she's a young girl could be hyperandrogenism and irregular periods. Also, right. irregular periods for a young girl until one year after menstruation could mean normal. It is okay. Yeah, it could again just be her transition. Yeah, it is just a transition. So when somebody says that I had I have PCOS and I just started menstruating, that would be wrong because and there are a lot of women who come to me and say that Nidhi, when I started my period, I always had you know, uh, irregular periods in the beginning, which is okay to do. Like, it's okay to have irregular periods when you start menstruating. So uh, I think there's a lot of confusion about diagnosis as well. Right. And uh, for young girls, uh, usually if they are experiencing symptoms and they cannot tick all the criteria, they are put in an at-risk category. So the wise way to do is you put them in an at-risk category and uh, if they still experience like a lot of symptoms, certain medications can be provided but that has to take into account that has to be taken into account with their bmi with their waist circumference with their cvd profile uh, with their blood pressure all of this so uh, this is all about like what pcos um, you know right. mean as a diagnosis and what could be the symptoms now uh, right. yeah i will stop here to see if you have yeah I, I have to ask something so yeah so you spelled out very clearly for us the three symptoms and you said two out of these three have to sort of exist for it to even qualify as PCOS and I think one of the misconceptions that people do have um, are with respect to the morphology and people feel like because it's polycystic the, the cysts definitely should be there but so that was a new thing that I learned I think that uh, even without the cyst, it, it could still qualify as PCOS. But the question um, I think that I would want you to clarify here is that what about uh, if there are no irregular periods? So in that case, if the other two conditions exist, it still could qualify as PCOS? Yes. So at least two out of these three, you could still have regular periods. And there are women who have regular periods and there is an ovulation means the ovulation is not happening then the serum progesterone is tested to see if the ovulation is happening or not uh, but okay. you can still have periods and you could have PCOS okay okay that was great that was actually very very insightful and um, and I love the point that you made about uh, not using ultrasound imaging as a method of diagnosing PCOS, just because uh, especially for pre-pubertal people, their bodies are still in transition and they it might just be a false diagnosis in that case. So, um, you know, just stemming from there, what would be a good way to screen for PCOS? And like, I think I'm asking this because uh, with PCOS, like you mentioned, all of the symptoms, all of the symptoms are very, very specific and yet very, very ambiguous, right? Like weight gain can happen for a um, plethora of reasons uh, even something like abnormal hair growth can happen for so many reasons something like alopecia is very very common so um, how do you finally uh, you know reach like a final result where you're like okay this is the symptoms exist and they are due to PCOS versus like the symptoms can be caused by multiple other things because you know I guess all of these symptoms are very very lifestyle related also so how do you finally reach? That's, uh, that's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you why. Because um, 
every body is different right and there's a lot to do of, on how our genes are so say uh, in some families women already are very hairy like you would see in the families coming from six or you know uh, afghan families they are very high on their facial hair growth so it could not mean that they have hirsutism okay and there is a, a ferimin galvey score and a calculator which you can use with the help of your practitioner to understand your hirsutism how severe it is is it hirsutism for you or no because not every yeah. facial hair growth could mean hirsutism but again if it's abnormal that none of your you know women in the families had it and now you have it and you see that the thickness suddenly has started to increase so in fact learning about hirsutism and your facial hair growth with the help of somebody who's an expert helps uh so i would say there are different things that you can do so first is looking at the early signs uh if there's lot of fat on your abdominal area on the you know you've just recently realized that i've you know started to gain a lot on my abdominals and i'm uh, i'm having irregular periods i'm started to feel a bit of you know more than usual pms symptoms mood swings and suddenly you have like you're feeling happy and suddenly you feel like very depressed and you experience this month on month that's a sign you need to get checked uh because periods is the sign of your health very simply so you may see that you're getting a period but it's not healthy enough the the flow what it used to be has suddenly declined and i'm talking about a young girl uh you know a girl in you know, uh, 20s and 30s they have they used to have like really good period and suddenly they realize that the flow has gone scanty the color has is not blood red and it has sort of become different be very mindful of that that how your periods are do you feel discomfort do you feel more than usual pms symptoms and pains those are the signs then obviously i talked about the hair growth and you know when you see uh, you have to go to the parlor more than the days like the break that you used to have you have to go even more to get rid of the hair that that you have on your face uh, that is there and uh, and and also looking at your uh, you know uh, the ultrasound reports which are the clear sign of what's going on inside that helps a uh, lot of women uh, do not take that proactive measure when you when you said what is the preventative care for this is being proactive and going to the gynecologist at least once a year if you do not have pcos just to make sure everything's okay and if you do have pcos then i think twice in a year to make sure that things are okay because in order to detect pcos a couple of things which are ruled out as well uh you know any any dominant uh, cyst so a lot of people have ovarian cyst as well which is different from pcos so it could grow outside of the ovaries so that's very important because the symptoms could be a bit similar then there is endometriosis which a lot of women experience which right. is very different from pcos then there is thyroid where the symptoms might you know be very similar yeah. in terms of experiencing fatigue weight gain or weight loss these are the symptoms that are very very similar right. so you have to rule out all of this in fact high prolactin so uh, all these conditions could be similar and you could get confused with pcos while some of the women uh have a combination of these so uh do not self diagnose although whatever we are saying is just to make mm -hmm. sure that you are more aware of your right, health right, and your symptoms um and don't like it's okay to google it's very normal to google but where are you reading it from because google also say that pcs can get you endometrial uh, metrial cancer but it would happen if you do not take account uh, of your health and do not take measures to sort of read the right knowledge so go to an expert which could who could help you understand your conditions and give you the right perspective and we didn't talk about alopecia or hair loss which has become very common uh right. so that is also something uh you know if you see that one certain patch in your head is sort of you you losing out your hair and you are experiencing more than usual hair loss uh that is also you need to be mindful uh yeah i mean that's that's what i would say yeah. there so i guess like i think i would love for you to just add here if there is one such conclusive test so let's say uh, you know so from so far we've understood that 
uh, these are some of the symptoms that exist. Uh, we should definitely be mindful of the symptoms and watch them. Also, keep in mind the three uh, criteria, the three criteria that you mentioned, and two out of three should match. Um, for somebody who may be observing this, who may be observing these symptoms, um, is there one conclusive? test like a blood test or an ultrasound or what is it that they should be uh, going for so they should be seeking help from their gynecologist and then getting in touch uh, you know how should they go about it You're right that's a great question so what where gynecologists usually help with the ultrasound understanding the diagnosis like because the 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 lab where you get your diagnosis like ultrasound from they will not conclude it they could say that there could be pieces so you go to the gynecologist show their reports and also get your hormone test done uh, on the period day too so there are certain pcod panel tests these days with the labs okay. who check their F uh, your fsh and lh ratio uh certain mm -hmm. hormone tests uh like amh which is not we should not be used as just a one indicator to have pieces a couple of hormones that your uh, uh gynecologist can recommend now it depends how old are you in terms of and how the severity of symptoms is some uh gynecologists recommend like a whole panel of hormones some would say that okay only get fsh lh uh, thyroid mm -hmm. estrogen yeah. Yes, so this is where you can start with looking at your estrogen, FSH, LH, uh, uh, FSH, LH, um, and an ultrasound report. Uh, other tests which are less commonly talked about and which are very very important, I would say, is the insulin resistance test, which is uh, HbA1c, insulin fasting, fasting glucose. This would help you to understand that if you are at a pre-diabetic range or Uh, right. you know if you do have closer to the diabetes range because not everybody but majority of women with pcos tend to have insulin resistance second right. which is important to check is the lipid profiles especially uh, you know women who feel that they they are closer to pcos and they've not gained weight so lean pcos cases they might be lean from the outside but inside they might have fat deposits and it would show in a lipid profile so when i say lipid profiles uh, ldl uh, hdl triglycerides cholesterol levels which are uh, very helpful to understand that how how much is the fat right now how does it show how the bad fats how are the good fats doing because good fats help you make um, uh, good hormones bad fats sort of takes you otherwise so that is very important to understand your C cvd profile cardiovascular health visceral fat is something which is also very helpful to understand so uh, i can mm. talk about like lean pcs because lean pcs are the ones which are i feel left out and uh, we should definitely yeah. talk about this and not everybody would say that go do a lipid profile until you go to a nutritionist who wants to make your diet chart so gynecologists usually recommend this nutritionist or a dietitian or somebody who is helping you with your eating patterns or life change lifestyle change uh, a, a advisor uh, needs to look at the lipid profiles nutritional deficiencies b12 d3 these are the most common ones especially somebody who has been on metformin uh, uh the longer usage of such medications like metformin right. can lead to low vitamin mm -hmm. b12 so b12 d3 uh are uh, and the iron iron is very very helpful just to see your ferritin levels ferritin and iron are different but yes that also helps if you're losing a lot of hair to see how your iron levels are doing uh blood pressure uh that's important your bmi and your waist circumference now again in asians uh, usually like a normal bmi is said that you have to be below 25 but the recent guidelines say that if you have more than 23 as an asian uh then you might want to consider yourself as going towards obese so um okay. these are the again things that you need to take in account uh very importantly uh, before i conclude this answer is that weight is not the only indicator of your health uh you could still weigh the same but uh especially with the lean pieces again uh you don't need to lose weight but you need to lose the fat so inch loss is something works right. much better than the weight loss in general because 
uh, what the guidelines say that uh, losing up to 5% of your fat helps, but you don't have to become skinny to get your regular period. So uh, what you look from the outside doesn't have to change a lot. It's basically inner health, which tells you uh, that how you're doing in terms of your overall health. So yeah, that's uh, an excellent uh, point. Yeah, so uh, how you look has nothing to do with, you know, the weight doesn't have to do with your uh, progression on your PCOS health or improvement. Okay, okay, I love that. And uh, I think you already uh, touched upon it a little bit. We're also getting some questions about it now, which uh, we'll just be taking shortly. But before we move on to that, uh, you know, you've uh, mentioned to me something which PCOS Club India and you uh, actually work on, which is the five-step approach to managing, and which is like the five-step approach to realistically managing. Because again, with PCOS, a lot of people are telling you a lot of things from like what kind of diet you should follow, how much you should be working out, um, how weight loss is actually something that's um, you know given so much importance uh, by a lot of practitioners as well. So um, could you briefly also uh, tell us or uh, you know talk about the approach that you think is a good way to go about managing PCOS and uh, a lot of the questions are actually about the approach so uh, whatever is left unanswered we can obviously again address those but yeah could you please start absolutely that? that's my favorite topic and I can go on and on you can stop me but uh, uh, yes, so managing pieces realistically, naturally. That's what I want to add on, naturally, without, with, without any hormonal medications. So there's a five-step approach, which I talk about, where these two are the most important, but without which the other three cannot happen. So first one is sleep. So if your sleep patterns are disrupt disrupted and uh, sleep apnea sleep disorders are very common in PCOS so if you're not sleeping well you do not give like you're losing an opportunity for aligning your hormones naturally so this is the most cheapest way and the most natural way to give an opportunity for our body to heal itself so if your sleep patterns are disturbed you will definitely not feel well emotionally and energy wise as well so these two need to come together so that these other three can happen. And I'll talk about what the other three are. But you need to give your body enough rest and that eight hour of sleep, at least seven hours of sleep, uninterrupted sleep. So because of the tech, enough said, because of the technology dependence these days and Instagram scrolling and I, I do not hear, I have to name it as well. So a lot of uh, you know, dependence on technology has sort of started affected this. And um, sleep is something that everybody should start from before they even think about their eating patterns because food is not the problem. The lifestyle is the way we live our lives. Right. Uh, also, uh, if you align your sleep towards more of the circadian rhythm, the way we have been designed to wake up uh, in the morning and um, sleeping in the night rather than sleeping in the morning and waking up in the night uh, that also gives yourself an opportunity to self-align because the way melatonin uh, is secreted and stopped the cortisol levels are you know um, uh, the way it is supposed to be released in the morning while it is being released in the night as well these days it's all because how we are sleeping so sleep is where you start from the first Second is emotional health. So if you are uh, experiencing, um, you know, bad, say, depression or anxiety or you feel low all the time, we need to address this. Because if you do not address these both, you will not go out and move or exercise and you will not feel like working out or you will not feel like eating as well. So if I tell you that, okay, tomorrow you need to eat a lot of salads and you should include more fiber in your diet and you should have these supplements, but you're not sleeping and you're really, really sad because, you know, your sleep patterns are affecting your hormones and you're not feeling up to the mark, then everything cuts out. So your healthy diet will go right. out of the window, right? So sleep and emotional health is where you need to start from rule number one. So once this is done, you feel better in terms of your energy levels already and you would want to go out and move. So what I try to call it is not exercise, but movement. So what movement means is picking up one activity that you feel 
really happy to do and motivated so everybody doesn't have to go and do yoga if you feel yoga is something that you don't enjoy then you can hit the gym if you don't like the gym you can go and pick a sport but has to be consistent so what the guidelines okay. say is that if you're looking at weight loss prevention if you are somebody who's already in a, a healthy bmi but needs to lose the fat only then it could be minimum of 150 minutes per week of exercise which is a combination okay. of a uh, a visceral uh, sorry a vigorous activity so it needs to have some strength based activity so it could be a power yoga or it could be lifting some uh, weights it could be anything so anything which could include some strength in the workout in that 150 per 150 minute per week if you are somebody really who's good. looking at losing the weight then it has to be minimum of 250 minutes per week this is the a uh, ballpark like what the guidelines say that can help you and also at least around 10000 steps a day uh it could be dividing these 10000 steps in two parts of the day so maybe you want to take out 40 minutes in the morning just go for a walk or 40 minutes after dinner just go for a walk and then a bit of routine activity could include those steps so you have to see for yourself how much is your activity how sedentary you are if you are somebody who only goes and gets up one hour in a day then you definitely need to work a lot on your movement if you are somebody who's already walking but have not seen a lot of difference you might want to include strength training if you are somebody who are doing both but not seeing a difference maybe you want to include some slower exercises because somebody who has hormonal imbalance and lot of cortisol is a uh, cortisol party is happening in our body you need to slow down and that's where yoga or you know pilates forms of exercise really help because they're slow right. and they give you our body a chance to sort of uh you know relax so uh, i i especially love yoga and i recommend because it's a powerful combination of relaxation in form of shavasana or child pose or power yoga and cardio based in terms of surya namaskar so it is very time uh friendly so if you just have 45 minutes it sort of combines everything but everybody is different uh, anything that can give you movement consistently every day at the yeah. same time building a routine so that's movement third fourth one is eating patterns so uh, for you uh, uh, if say somebody tells you that tomorrow you have to eat healthy and from there on it, because you have pcos you cannot have gluten you cannot have dairy you cannot or you have to do keto or you have to do intermittent fasting it really makes you mad and especially these days when you see like 50 diets on your screen on every account you sort of lose it but where you can start with is that uh, without losing your mind look at your food eating habits and see what culture you belong to uh, what kind of food your ancestors had been having and what is the food that you enjoy are you somebody who's a foodie and wants like different kinds of meals every day then you have to work according to that if you are somebody who has a palate of home cooked and you love indian meals then you have to work on that so without getting into details overall anything that you put on plate needs to be home cooked or uh, you know not coming out of a packet or is processed right. as much as possible at least 90% of the time if you can manage make on your own on whatever food you like no no re regulations yes there has been research on how uh, you know uh, gluten can be inflammatory but everybody is again different so somebody like we did a poll we keep doing the poll on our page and there were 50% right. of people who were still okay to take gluten and they were okay to uh, sort of continue their pcs diet so when i say that go 100% of gluten as a rule that will be wrong see how you feel give yourself 3 months and in that 3 months in the first 3 weeks try to reduce that particular probable inflammation inflammatory food say dairy or gluten does it really affect you if if not seen any change that means it is not the culprit there's something else which is causing this Right? right so right. don't outright reject foods because what happens is i've seen a lot of girls what they do is that they take out all the foods but there's nothing that you bringing in back to balance your diet and that is mm -hmm. very important especially when you already have a nutritional deficiencies 
now mm. you're doing uh, your changes on the eating patterns and you are actually very low on iron you're actually very low on d3 and b12 and you're trying all the lifestyle changes and you're saying nidhi i cannot see a difference because your body is already struggling inside to make that d3 or it's in a survival mode so first is combining that supplementation temporary supplementation to see that okay if i'm deficient maybe take that supplementation and then do lifestyle changes so that's also very right. important coming back to the eating patterns taking up pro probable inflammatory foods which are these days packaged dairy so packaged dairy in fact is definitely processed so try if you want hmm. to take dairy and experiment with dairy try to take real dairy coming from a farm or support a gao shala and get it or maybe a local farmer very easy to do in india obviously very difficult outside india but this is somebody who's residing in india so see and experiment how it is and how much dairy can you take in my right. approach i truly believe that if you keep your plate 90% plant based meaning coming from only plant based food you do not have to worry about increasing your fiber because all the fiber is in plants animal foods do not have fiber so in the same right. plate if you put more animal foods your fiber sort of comes Decreases. down so so in pcos fiber is like a great magnet which attaches itself to all the extra floating hormones and toxins and sort of helps you take it out of the system so fiber is a very very important element and it is all in plant based foods processed foods out of the window home cooked foods you know uh, uh need to be included good fats very very important to make good hormones so good fats are nuts uh nuts seeds coconut avocado if you can do it if your budget allows uh and uh, organic desi so desi cow sourced ghee uh is also yeah. very good it's it's a it's a magic potion i would say for your hormones so um these are the things that you need to include more importantly eat as per your lifestyle if you are a person who is very active and uh, you know is highly like in, uh, you know into sports and uh, doing all sorts of activity you cannot count your calories you need to nourish your body right. if you're a person who's sitting all day in front of screen and having uh, having meals every 2 hours that could be something which is definitely not recommended so how active yeah. you are you should look at your diet according to that and that's also something that i consider while uh, in my uh, counseling sessions with women that how active are you what is your routine looking from the time that you get up till the time you sleep what kind of activities do you do do you give yourself enough enough nap time or a rest time so that your body is able to keep up with all the stress so that is what right. the fifth point is that routine building stress management self care is something that you must must look into that's the fifth element and where i also talk about herbs and certain adaptogens that really help so adaptogens like ashwagandha seed cycling using seeds just to uh, in particular cycle of your uh, month uh, say pumpkin okay. and flax so follicular uh, phase of the cycle and uh, sesame and sunflower in the luteal phase it sort of helps you manage your uh, hormones and balance your hormones naturally no medical research has been done on it but there are a lot of ancestral practice on it and now people are going back to that i personally have been mm -hmm. doing it for years now and i feel uh, good i mean it, there's no science behind this but it's sort of you know you can say something like a dadi mama personal experience yes right. uh, that is there and there uh, shatavari is something which is Uh, you know amazing different seeds that you can include like alsi or chia seeds these are great right. uh, uh this is where you can start and obviously it also depends how your metabolism and gut health is so these are just like indicative things that i told you you need to understand your root cause as well that why do you feel the things or the symptoms that you have is it thyroid yeah. is it gut health are you constipated and you're not sort of you know you're ignoring this that you're constipated and you're looking at oh i'm not getting my periods it could be related to gut health or frequent diarrhea yeah. uh, uh frequent rashes allergies so these are the things that you have to take into account while you are making your change in eating patterns and not directly taking out everything right. so this is the five rule uh, which i follow uh, personally and with my clients as well 
Yeah, no, I love that. It was um, it was actually very very holistic, right? From where you're starting with saying that if these two things don't exist, the other won't even be possible because um, you really made it realistic. It's absolutely true. Like if you can't sleep, even if it's about one day having a bad you know night of interrupted sleep or bad sleep, you're not even able to work out that day. And I guess yeah, like those two things I definitely agree with you. um and it was so great that you pointed it out because i guess like everybody who is here hearing this today will be a little more mindful of things um uh, so i would like you know, to again, add on something yeah. here since we just spoke about it is that uh, when you looking at tiredness uh, do not just look at it from the eating patterns only uh, it could be because of your bad gut health that you're not able to metabolize all the food well or assimilate that food well and also your mental stress takes a really big toll on your body as well so do not forget right. that if you're having a bad relationship uh you know phase or you have you know some personal neg- negativity is going on around you you need to address that first before you start blaming just on the food absolutely no absolutely thank you so much for sharing that actually and uh, a lot of the questions that we got yesterday and i can also see some that we're getting right now are around uh, you know managing it so i'm just going to quickly go over some of the questions and um, a lot of them have been answered but i'll just say them out loud so people who ask them know they've been answered um how do you know you have pcos so if this person was here uh this was discussed right at the beginning so you can you know we'll also be uploading this so you can go back to it and watch it again then there were questions regarding symptoms regarding and i think somebody right now also asked that we have all symptoms except weight gain could it still be pcos so um briefly yes it could still be pcos because um the list of symptoms are symptoms but there are three things which uh, nidhi mentioned right at the beginning and if you have two out of those three then you should look at getting yourself screened for pcos and you should seek yeah. help um is that okay yeah 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 um okay then we have two questions about exercises and there's another one which i can see right now which is come right now so the questions are how can you lose weight without extreme diets and high intensity workouts then another one saying what are some of the exercises that you know somebody who has a back problem or knee pain could do and then again there's one which you can see right now which is which is better for lean pcos yoga or exercise okay so i'll come from the general uh, exercise patterns to uh, somebody who has issues working out because of uh, back ache or knee ache and then we'll come to lean pcos so generally as i said that it please do not expect a uh, magic to happen um, you have to be consistent so more important is whatever exercise that you pick up say to from mm-hmm. tomorrow you're going to go and play badminton uh, so every day that happens for that particular time consistently it doesn't happen today you do it and you forget about it and you come back to it four day four uh, days later so consistency is one and something that you can do without hitting the gym could be yoga at your own room you just need a mat and you can also do it in your pajamas you do not have to actually wear gym clothes so it's so easy yeah. <laughs> that you find yourself a room to yourself play a nice background music which you love put the mat uh, you know, and i feel that go- taking up a yoga program just for 30 days to start with is a great way because on youtube and everywhere else they do not understand what is your level so if you are somebody who has not done yoga for a really long time but you have been practicing it's good for you to do it on your own but somebody who is just listening to me and they've never tried yoga and it's one of the most easy ways to sort of start your exercise then please take a just a 30 day uh, you know uh, instructor led session and there's so many options these days and i have so yeah. many people that i can connect you with if you like uh that who can help you that is one picking up a sport is another one which you do not need to pay any subscription for you just need the you know cricket bat or a badminton racket and find somebody who can you you can play with third is walking uh now with walking uh, especially women who have insulin resistance type uh, pcos which is more prominent walking really helps 
uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be jogging or fast running depending on your body type and your health profile you see what you enjoy at the end of the day you should feel energetic there's no rule but if you go and say that tomorrow uh, yesterday i saw somebody doing hit training i'm going to start it tomorrow with hit training uh you need to first build that strength so if you've never exercised right. and tomorrow you hit the gym and your gym instructor says that you have to do three sets in one minute and whatsoever this will really ruin your hormones so first is to build that stre- uh, strength and resistance uh, how much your body can take and then sort of challenge yourself that okay if i want to do hit this is the strength that i need to build using yoga using exercise uh, you know walking running walking is the cheapest way and the most effective way there are certain set of people who find it very very exhausting so you need to see if you find that exhausting then slower forms of exercises are for you so yin yoga yoga also which is not fast paced slower forms of exercise right. especially now coming to people who have back ache and knee issues again yoga is amazing slower forms of yoga asanas uh, in back aches will really help you uh balance your hormones and again give you a chance to build your uh back strength or a knee strength so that needs to be again assisted please don't do it yourself do take a course it could be what i suggest which is very practical and uh, easy to do is that you get somebody to train you twice in a week and rest of the days you practice on your own so that way is uh, you it's not a lot heavy on your pocket as well it's it's something that whatever works for you but it's just for somebody who does not want to shell out much two days in a week you call somebody rest of the days you just have to implement yourself being consistent right. making a plan uh for lean pcos uh, uh strength training is a game changer because you the the good fat the good muscle that you build in helps you increase your insulin sensitivity so uh if you as a person are very lean in terms of the you know good fats a good muscle then you need to work on strength training to build that so strength training is amazing slow forms of exercise are amazing not too much cardio that doesn't mean you are sedentary you need to be normally right. active but do not necessarily have to be like 10000 steps it could be somewhere like 7 to 8000 including your routine and then working on slower forms along with strength training could be power yoga or lifting the weights okay yeah that's great um i would also just request uh, people because even in the question box i can see some very specific questions so um i would request you to actually connect with uh, nidhi on the pcos club india instagram profile you can just drop them an email or a message because um you know i can even ask those questions to her right now but it would actually be much more helpful for you to talk to her one on one um you know rather than uh, sort of get general advice right now and i'll try and ask some more general questions which are sort of associated with what other people are asking as well um in terms of food that we have two or three very uh, closely related questions asking us if there are uh, certain food groups that you should avoid if you are managing pcos um if there are certain food groups you should definitely include and there is a question about dairy there is a question about is milk slash cheese really really bad i think that's been answered uh by you but yeah these are the two questions about I, food which i feel like a lot of people could benefit from before i even uh, talk about all of this i'm going to tell uh, about my journey of exploring different foods so i have started uh, i've been at a place where i explored gluten free dairy free going absolutely extreme and destroyed my food relationship and realized that these are like i cannot be without gluten for a really long time and this is definitely not a rule so i have been there without gluten without dairy uh, and explored all sort of extreme uh, things that i thought that this is the rule because a lot of social media pages are just about gluten free dairy free i myself yeah. i'm actually vegan but uh, i practice uh, you know uh, a limited form of uh, dairy but it would be in form of ghee okay which i absolutely okay. love it 
so one thing when i took out ghee was very very depressing for me because i love ghee on my chawal and my dal and i really started to miss it but i would say i'm not completely vegan but i am studying a plant based nutrition course and i know what are the things which are harmful and what should be taken in moderation so people who have been asking about dairy and gluten i would say i've been there done that and what i would advise you is you see how your body is so when we say in terms of uh, what the research say or what the current research is saying that how gluten affects the people who have pcs or diabetes or hormonal issues there are a lot of research which confirms that gluten is inflammatory and you can switch to gluten free and one kind of ancestral grains that we all had were millets so millets are mostly like 90% of them are originally gluten free and that you can switch to them mm. so if you are somebody who cannot do wheat ka wheat roti and you uh, and how you can do is that for 10 days stop eating wheat roti or maybe just start adding millets to your wheat roti and absolutely right. take it out for 10 days and then you see do you feel well do you feel less bloated do you still feel a lot of gassiness were you experience farting fartiness or as, uh, gassiness a lot of it and now you've stopped experiencing it that means gluten free is doing really well for you so give yourself enough time to experiment if you see absolutely no change then that means you can take gluten and wheat for some people like for myself uh, i could not take suji like suji used to make me feel really bloated so i took it off now i i i have been from being absolutely not taking gluten to now occasionally taking it because i love taking you know gluten and millet sport so when you're right. starting off your journey when you have experiencing very very high symptoms try reducing gluten and take millets because any which ways they're high in fiber and you need fiber so there's no harm switching to uh, gluten free millets uh, but try to stick to like our ancestral grains more which are grown in our soil uh where our dna recognizes the you know the millets that our ancestors used to have so that's a great way, place to start uh second is dairy uh again as i said there are people who take dairy well there are people who do not take dairy well and i right. fall in that category and i know and i'm aware i've been experimenting it for last 5 years so you start your journey by reducing your dairy to half in the next 10 days and then completely take it out and then introduce it back after 10 15 days with the half cup does your body react or is it same you did not experience anything that means dairy is not hmm. the culprit for you now i'll tell you in right. general what happens what what is good so in general the food groups which are very very good are lots and lots of colors which are available only in vegetables and fruits okay so i follow a pattern when i put my food on the plate there should be at least six colors on the plate so one is the dal color or green based or rajma pulses dal whatever you have that color then one uh, yeah. sabzi that we had a habit home okay that or a combination of sabzi that you can do and three colors of the salad so any side salad that you can make and doesn't have to be a fancy one so i'm making a very generic indian based like indian palate ghar ka khana type and uh, and keep if you if you're a person who is very sedentary then i would keep my roti a bit lesser and dal and sabzi more because if you keep more vegetables on your plate say make a rule that at least 40% of your plate will be vegetables so that automatically increases your fiber that automatically cuts down your calories that automatically cuts your glycemic index so somebody who is only running after one thing which is low on glycemic index they should look at glycemic index of the whole plate and not just food one food group and the way you do it is combination of foods it's not just one food so yeah. um, and no, I, love, i love the trick you mentioned about like having colors like that's an easy way to sort of make sure that you have everything in there and and uh, and second thing is that uh, if you bring in the ayurveda concept as well that the reason why we feel lot of sugar cravings is that our body was supposed to have that sugar so there are six rasas and i think somebody al- already mentioned it here i love that it's mentioned yeah. here that 
there's six rasas on your plate and which includes sugar as well so there are so okay. many things that nature gives us which has natural sugars and what we do is that we deprive our body of natural sugars when it's supposed to have sugar so if you were depriving your body of the of the rasa that we are supposed to have then obviously we will feel cravings so if you balance right. it out by say in between your meals you can have a fruit so your natural sugars are also there or figs or, or raisins or or anything which is naturally sweet then you will not give extreme things to your body you, your body is still getting sugars and it will not ask for sugar separately so this is what helps balance everything in balance yeah that makes so, complete sense about you know when you deprive yourself of something you crave it even more so i think it's uh, bringing it back to the point where you said that before like excluding food groups find a suitable replacement so if you decide to not have sugar at all because you know that's the way you want to go you should find a way to sort of replace that with something yeah i love that um i do I have one it. more yeah I know we are almost at the uh, end of the hour, and I can, yeah. as I said, I can speak for hours. Uh, anybody who do have any questions uh, specifically about their diet, I love to sort of help them. Uh, what we also do as part of Pieces Club India is that we run uh, Pieces Healing programs, and they are personally run by me, along sometimes along with experts, sometimes alone. So you can uh, just come on our page and inquire about it. We are I'm launching another program tonight. which is yoga plus my pieces healing programs so anybody who's interested they can take part so we do a lot of the, such things uh, and people are interested to do one on one i can guide you as well so uh, there's lots that we can talk about in pieces but one thing that i would say is everybody is different so do not follow a generic diet just because you saw it on a social media page make an informed decision love that yeah <laughs> So I guess there's um you know one more question which is uh, a little specific but I'll just put it here. So it's basically asking if it's specifically about hair growth of course but the question here really is that is there a possibility that you can make the symptoms reverse? Um yeah. so without going into the specifics maybe the question is uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's on hair loss right or yeah. is it hirsutism okay both of them so uh, if you talk about hair loss or if you talk about hirsutism my personal experience is that i was able to reduce my growth it takes time in of reducing or at least you can see your hair growth becoming lighter so right. from the hard growth it has become lighter and then you see that it has become slower also so it is a very very i would say a dedicated hard work that you have to do unfortunately but the hope is yes you will see a difference if you do it consistently uh, a lot has to do with the strength training as well because i have personally seen that strength training or slower exercises have helped me with reducing my facial hair growth regarding hair loss as well uh, i feel that um, you know current lifestyle does not allow us to um you know more cleaner foods or the way we want would mm -hmm. like to eat so supplements is something that i really think that we do need and uh, certain supplements in in our current lifestyle there are certain supplements that can help you to uh, manage your hair loss and you can see at least stopping of that hair loss Uh, and again it is all dependent on what kind of health profile do you have you must go through a full profile of your insulin resistance test your uh, d, b, uh, vitamin d b12 deficiency iron deficiency look at how much uh, balanced foods you are having first correct that and then look at supplements to sort of also you know uh, make it a uh, a whole good lifestyle change for you So this is what I would yeah. uh, say and yes it is definitely possible to reverse PCOS and manage it Uh, what i say you can manage it like a queen if you know that these are the things that i've already addressed and you have to be consistent so it's possible yeah and i love like i would love to just end on this really good note where you said uh, that it is absolutely possible to manage your pcos and live a healthy life uh, you are such a shining example of the same and uh, yeah mm -hmm. i think i would i think we have a minute to go so i would quickly like to thank you so much again for sharing your evening with us and um i personally learned so much and i guess everybody else uh, feels the same way as well uh, once again for all of the people because there are people who have specific queries uh, who 
could maybe use help and counseling from Nidhi herself, you can head over to their Instagram page and you can shoot them an email or a DM. And uh, she's honestly the nicest person you will get to interact with in terms of like even counseling for PCOS and otherwise. So I hope you're able to connect with her and find some help there. And I loved having you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Adhika. And it's been, uh, I would no, love to do something with you in the future as well. Definitely. We should do some more work together and I would love to be associated with you. Thank you for having me and it was lovely chatting with the community and I look forward to having such wonderful sessions in future. So you have a good evening and thanks everybody who watched this session today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I'll just be ending this now. Bye. Bye.